Okay, so this is my second time trying to actually record this video because people keep calling me, um, which I don't like. So uh, this video is a little bit different and it's going to really address, um, as you see in the title, how do I afford my 2018 Shelby GT350? So what do I do for a living, okay? And these, these videos are important because we have, uh, anytime you have like an automotive related channel, you're gonna have a, um, a younger following, okay? Um, so let's get right into it, all right? So first off, um, for those of you who don't know, I'm in my 30s, I'm 31 actually. Um, so I'm not one of these dudes on YouTube acting like, you know, you know, hey, I got my, you know, $70,000 vehicle at 22 or something like that. No, I'm 31 years old, okay? And I was actually uh, uh, like a, a week, a week uh, into my 30, you know, my year 31, okay? I uh, purchased my vehicle, all right? So let's first say um, uh, high school, okay? High school, um, I was an idiot, all right? And when I say idiot, I don't mean... Um, intellectual idiot you know i don't mean that i wasn't able to uh, understand the material or anything like that um i say i was an idiot because I, I chose not to apply myself all right so in high school um got kicked out of classes uh got kicked out of school um it was crazy right um i probably graduated with like maybe like a one point I don't know, I'm just guessing here. I've never seen my transcript at all. Maybe a 1.8, 1.9 GPA. If that, if that, like seriously. Um, just because I, I, I would skip school so much, I would just get kicked out of classes. You know, when you get kicked out of classes, you know, they give you a failing grade for it. You know, so um, I was an idiot in that regard. So when I was 16, 17, you know, that's when I really kind of really, really, you know, got into cars. Um, you know, I used to be a Honda guy, you know. Uh, back then, I actually used to have a 1990, uh, 1996, yeah, 1996 Honda Prelude, right? And I had a JDM H22A, you know, swapped in it, you know, I uh, had a Honda S300, uh, pretty much full bolt-ons, um, and a ton of, excuse me, a ton of weight reduction, okay? So that was my thing. That's what I would do, you know, I'd do a little street racing, um, taught myself how to drive a manual, you know, when we got that car and... and you know, the rest was history. Um, but as far as school, I didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do. I didn't know what I wanted to do at all. Um, you know, so when I graduated, um, what I ended up doing is uh, enrolling into Lincoln Tech. Okay, so for those, for those of you who don't know, Lincoln Tech is a, an automotive school, you know, where you, you know, pretty much learn the ins and outs of uh, the automobile uh, repair service, if that makes any sense. Um, that's what I did, you know. Um, you know, they have this thing, you know. Uh, I don't, I don't know. This location that I went to was very new at the time. You know, they had just built it, okay. And they had this thing where uh, it's called Top Gun status, okay. Top Gun status is like you're on the top five or ten percent of your graduating class or whatever. Um, and if you do become a Top Gun, you are um, awarded the opportunity to do an internship. Okay, you have to find the internship or find a place to, to intern at, um, but you are awarded that opportunity. Okay, so going throughout the program, you know, I knew my shit. You know what I mean? I uh, only class I, I, you know, I still did great in. You know what I mean? But you know, only class I didn't really mess with was transmissions. I still don't mess with transmission stuff. You know, at all. Um, so anyway, um, during that time, for whatever reason, I have my own theories, but for whatever reason. I was not able to find an internship. You know, I remember going to, uh, you know, a couple of Honda dealerships, things like that. And, you know, I just couldn't, you know, nobody would accept me, you know, uh, to do an internship for whatever reason, you know, um, you know, despite, you know, me going through Lincoln Tech and, and having such a high GPA, like I was, you know, my stuff was, was beastly. Um, so that was a fail. You know, I ended up working at Jiffy Lube you know, changing tires and changing oil, things like that. Um, you know, but I always thought that was beneath me, you know, and, I, and it's no offense to anybody that does that. You know, I just, you know, I knew my intellectual capabilities and um, even, even, even if I'm just focusing on automotive, I know what I can do, you know what I mean? So why am I focused on, or why am I allowing myself to kind of just do oil, you know, and tires and things like that, you know? 
Um, needless to say, I got out of automotive, okay? Um, I started doing all different types of other jobs, okay? And uh, life hit, you know, life hit. Um, ended up getting arrested, you know, uh, uh, ended up being homeless, you know, things like that. Um, actually, while I was homeless, you know, I was living in a, a city called, don't worry about the city. I was, I was living in a certain city and, um, you know, I had an Anytime Fitness membership, okay? And so with that Anytime Fitness membership, you know, obviously it's a gym membership. So, you know, I can go in there and take a shower. So that's what I did, you know, and I had a truck, you know, I had an uh, expedition and I was sleeping my expedition, okay? Um, and there was a hotel across the street, so I would kind of go to the parking lot and use their free Wi-Fi, you know? So that's what I did, you know what I mean? Um, also do, used to do some computer programming. That's how I used to make my, make my money on the side. I used to do uh, a lot of computer programming, you know, so, People in Australia and other other countries would just hit me up and say, "Hey, I need this program made. I will make it." Okay, um, and so that was a good little hustle. It's just that the programs I made weren't legal. Okay, um, so one random day, I decided, you know, well, I decided to apply apply for college. All right, and so the reason I did that is because I'm like, man, if I can get into college, then I could sleep in the dorms. So. It wasn't for me, you know, to, to really get an education, but it was me, it was for me to have a place to sleep, all right? Um, I got in, you know, uh, they accepted me. So, cool, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm gonna go, you know? And that really changed my life, you know what I mean? College was uh, awesome, it was a great experience. Um, met a lot of dope people, you know, joined a fraternity, all that good stuff. Um, my major at the time, well, my major, I guess when I graduated with was uh, criminal justice. Okay, I used to actually want to be a police officer, um, you know. But like I told you guys, I got arrested. I got arrested twice actually. You know, first time was actually a legitimate arrest. Second time was some bullshit. You know, I'm sorry to cuss, but it was some bullshit. And uh, um, I hate to be one of those people that say you know they were innocent, but I absolutely was innocent, and um, absolutely innocent, like 100% innocent. And um, you know. Um, uh, by the grace of God, I was able to beat that case, you know, uh, but it just it just lasted. I actually got arrested in college, you know, the second time um, and it lasted from 2012 through the end of 2013. OK, and, um, you know, just they, they wanted me to sign plea deals for shit that I didn't do, you know, so I wasn't going to do it, you know, and, and and, you know, by the time I graduated, this case was still actually going on. So, you know, the criminal justice uh, degree that I actually, you know, worked hard for becomes irrelevant at that point because it was a felony, you know. And so for those of you who don't know, once you get arrested, the, the arrest is on your record. OK, um, it doesn't matter if, you know, you haven't been convicted or not. If you get arrested, that arrest is on your record. And ultimately, that's what employers look at. OK. Um, they're trying to see what's on your record, okay? And, and some things, you know, you can and cannot qualify for, you know, based on what's on your record. Actually, in fact, um, I was applying for different apartments because after I graduated, you know, I needed a place to stay, you know, obviously, you know, not on campus anymore. I wanted to move back to my home, home city. Um, but I couldn't even get certain apartments because, you know, they were saying, you know, hey, you got this on your record, even though it was just something that was pending. Um, needless to say, you know, uh, I got that situation taken care of. Like I said, by the grace of God, I got that stuff taken care of. And, um, you know, I was able to eventually, you know, expunge, expunge my record. All right. Um, during that process, during that time of me expunging my record, I actually got into the, the field of social work, social work. All right. And that's still the field I'm in right now. All right. So to answer your question, what I do for a living, um, I'm the executive director, um, and founder of a local nonprofit organization that's a child and family welfare organization. So in a nutshell, what we do is we work with children and adults, but children that are victims of various child abuse and neglects. Okay, so you're gonna have like physical abuse, uh, sexual abuse, uh, child trafficking, you know, various types of neglect. Uh, we work with those children and we work with the parents, okay, uh, by providing different services. So that's what I do for a living, all right? Um, I you know, did get my master's degree um, in public administration with a nonprofit leadership concentration, um, which is why you know, I started my own nonprofit organization because that's my baby, that's, this is what I do, is business. Um, so 
that's how I afford my Shelby GT350. Now, with that said, do I think that owning my own business is necessary to, to purchase a Shelby GT350? Absolutely not. Because despite what everybody else around me thinks, I don't make that much money, all right? I make six figures, but I make, I'm on the very, very, very low end of the six figure, um, six figure window, okay? Uh, it's just that my wife and I, you know, live below our means, okay? So, um, you know, we have a nice size house and all that type of good stuff, um, but we live below our means. So we kind of cut out some of those extra luxuries that other people um, feel like they can't live without. All right. Um, I don't. I don't rack up a bunch of you know unnecessary bills, uh, except like when I buy car parts and stuff. So, uh, car, car, the car stuff, man. Like that's cars and guns. Like that's that's my guilty pleasure. Like that, it's an expensive ass hobby. You know, hobbies to have. Um, like I have my Tavor over here. You know, which costs a good amount of money. I don't want to say it because um, my my wife might actually watch this video. But um, the point is, point of me saying that is. To own and purchase a GT350, um, there's two things I want you to be mindful about, okay? First thing to be mindful about is your credit score, okay? Credit is important. My credit used to be absolute shit. Obviously, if I'm going through life, I'm losing jobs, things like that, my credit used to be horrible, you know what I mean? Now, I'm a credit guru, thanks to you know my brother. My brother taught me a lot of stuff, and then I've learned a lot of stuff along the way, okay? So, my credit's high, you know what I mean? Like, they want to bought my... Uh, the Shelby, I was at like a 790, okay? Um, 790 something, all right? So um, I was able to purchase that, okay? So credit is important, and no, you do not need a lot of money to have high credit. Now, it's, I know it sounds stupid, but I've heard people say that, that you know, my credit score can't be high because I don't have a lot of money. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be high, okay? You just have to have, there's a responsibility factor and a know-how um, to get your to, to raise your credit score we're not going to have a credit score discussion uh, but i might do that in the future i don't know um so be mindful of your credit score um be mindful of your finances okay because you, you don't want to uh, overextend yourself even for a vehicle i know you only live once but you don't want to overextend yourself like for real and um and, and just overall just be prepared for the opportunity to actually purchase a GT350 or whatever else, whatever your dream car is, okay? Um, with me, I knew the exact color, the exact year, I knew everything that I wanted, you know? And uh, on Labor Day of last year, you know, when I actually purchased the vehicle, um, you know, I, I was just, you know, randomly doing my research that I do, and I saw that a dealership right next to me had it. You know, like I was literally not supposed to buy a vehicle that day, you know, uh, we actually had family over because, you know, it's Labor Day, obviously. So we had family over and, um, you know, I told my wife, I was like, look, I'll be back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the goal was really just to kind of go and try to test drive it because I've really never, never sat in a sh uh, Shelby before. You know, I was worried about the Recaro seats, like kind of hugging me because I'm a bigger guy. Right. Um, but yeah, I walked out with the, with the, <laughs> walked out with the Shelby, you know, so preparation uh, is key. All right. Um, I'm not going to make a super long video. I think we're at like 13 minutes right now. Hey, also, listen, let me know what you guys think about this quality, okay? Because this is a brand new camera. Now, uh, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, uh, which if you do not follow me on Instagram, uh, it's going to be in the description, but it's Meech, M-E-E-C-H underscore GT350, okay? So follow me on Instagram because what I'm going to do is start posting updates there um, so people can know what to expect, all right? So if you are an Instagram follower of mine, um, I actually posted a picture showing that I got a new camera, all right? So this right here is a Canon G7X Mark II, all right? It's a dope camera from all the reviews that I've seen. Um, I'm not sure how, this is my very first video, literally. So I'm not sure how the audio quality is gonna be um, because it doesn't really have like an external mic or anything like that, but um, I can see myself, you know, it's a point and shoot camera, but I can see myself because the screen flips up. So this is actually exactly what I wanted. Um, so as I start doing my vlogs, things like that, I'm going to use this camera. Um, unless I'm in my vehicle, I might use the GoPro. So the other camera I use, um, it's in the Shelby still, but um, it's a GoPro uh, Hero 7 Black, okay, which is the one with the image stabilization. So um so yeah, this is the new setup, man. Like it looks good. Like it looks really good. Like I, I, you know, looking kind of good. You know what I mean? So, 
Um, anyway, that's it. You know what I mean? If you guys have any questions, you know, since I only have like 95 followers right now, you know, I can, I can really respond to people and really engage with people like I want. So if you guys got questions on, you know, my, um, my channel, the vehicle, any, any type of setup, questions uh the camera like anything you know literally just just put a comment under one of the videos i get notifications on the, with the youtube app so i should be able to kind of respond um if i don't respond you know don't feel disrespected or anything like that i probably just missed the notification all right um or by the time you actually comment i got about 50,000 subscribers and I, I can't just comment with everyone all right other than that man make sure you like comment subscribe on my channel hit that notification bell so i can kind of keep you guys updated every time i upload a video all right because i'm actually going to start like i said in the last video i'm going to start knocking out this content i'm actually going to change clothes here in a second get out into shelby and drive it for the very first time not drive it for the very first time but actually hit boost for the very first time with the pro charge setup so i want to do like a proper reaction video since when I actually got the car back, it was it was nighttime. So I'm actually going to do that here in a second. So, you know, make sure you subscribe and uh, yeah, look forward to those videos. All right. Peace.